And today is quite a day for a coal seam gas company to have booked its annual general meeting, of course. Metgasco is a mid-sized business with about half the coal seam gas reserves of Santos in Australia. They're located largely in northern New South Wales. I spoke to the company's chief financial officer and spokesperson, Glenda McLaughlin, earlier. Glenda McLaughlin, thank you for joining us. Hello, Tiki. Well, look, this sector is politically hot. I don't think we can deny that. Only today we're hearing that there was a, a, a coal seam gas moratorium, supposedly, in New South Wales, and then the government came back and said, no, well, actually, that there's, there's not a statewide moratorium. How do you, as a player in the industry, react to that? The moratorium that wasn't a moratorium. Yeah. Yes, well, there was a bit of confusion there for uh, for an hour or so this morning, but um, um, we, we were very confident that the New South Wales government was going to be supportive of the gas industry. They've been very consistent in their statements that they intend to see a gas industry develop in this state. Mm. There is a build-up against the coal seam gas industry that's happening at the moment. You've got get up on your case uh, in your area in northern New South Wales, the dairy co-op Norco, I notice, is still not convinced about production on, on their land. And then last week, Lismore Council was taking action when it discovered that their staff had given you <coughs> permission to do a bit of seismic activity on, on, on council land. How did the AGM go today? Did those sort of issues come up? Well, uh, Magasco has always been very committed to um, engaging with stakeholders and talking with the landowners and talking with our um, stakeholders in the Northern Rivers region. So, yes, we spent a lot of time today at our AGM talking about the proactive um, actions that we're taking in terms of engaging with stakeholders and, you know, that involves talking to local councils and talking to local community groups. We're out there every week talking to different people. You don't yet have mining licences, do no. you? You're still on the expiration side, because one of the criticisms has been that this has all gone far too fast. I noticed Bill Heffernan, who's chairing the Senate inquiry into all this, says in Queensland the horse has bolted. Yes, well, this just demonstrates how long it actually takes to get these types of large energy developments up and running. They're not things that are actually uh, brought into production overnight. They take years and years of exploration work. Uh, obviously, there's been a lot of talk about fracking and uh, potential uh, toxic chemicals getting into the water system, but uh, uh, another area that um, I know the committee is focusing on, the inquiry is focusing on, is, is salt and the ability or the inability of some of these aquifers to get rewatered. Now, the sort of numbers that are coming out from Queensland tenements already, between supposedly between 1 million tonnes and 1.6 million tonnes per annum of salt will be produced. That's a lot of salt. These, those numbers seem awfully high to me. I, I don't think that those numbers can be correct. Um, but I would make the point that salt isn't salt. Some people think that this is salt water like seawater. It's not. It's about 50% of the salt content of seawater. And it's not actually sodium chloride, as, sea, as we see in seawater. It's actually sodium bicarbonate. And sodium bicarbonate is actually can be a useful product. Um, it's used, used for fertilisers and... So it could be taken away as a yeah, product. The can, issue is if it's back on the land, it's still a problem. That's yeah. right. And the reason why the water is not put onto the land is that a lot of plants are not salt, salt tolerant and so they can't actually actually handle that level of salt. So, I mean, we're hearing around the world now, going back to the issue of fracking, um, <clears throat> we're seeing uh, a report in Britain that the earth tremors in around Blackpool uh, are associated with the fracking that happened there. Similar reports are now coming through in the US. Um, in South Africa, there's a six-month moratorium on coal seam gas. Uh, the, 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 there seems to be a build against the industry at the moment. Um, there's certainly a lot of publicity around fracking in particular, um, but I'd say that there's also been a number of independent inquiries into fracking which have um, said that fracking is a very safe technique when it's applied um, using appropriate engineering practices. So, for example, the UK had a parliamentary committee inquiry specifically into fracking in the shale gas industry and, uh, and produced a very um, credible, detailed report supporting the use of fracking. You, you don't worry that there's, uh, there's a growing um, concern that actually could create real political risk for you in yes, the industry? Yes, I am. Yes, yes. Of course the industry is concerned about uh, where, where the community has such significant concerns emerging around practices that the industry considers to be standard operating practice that have been underway for, you know, 40 years. There haven't been very many documented incidents, in fact, very, very few. It's been investigated thoroughly. So, of course, the industry is concerned if we're not able to communicate the message effectively that mm. those sorts of techniques can actually be used um, safely 
and I mean, it must be a very big for the industry. Room conversation at the moment. Yes, it's a it's certainly a, a, a topic of a lot of conversations within the industry about how to communicate the message that uh, gas is a very clean fossil fuel. It's the cleanest of the fossil fuels. It's essential that we develop our gas resources if we actually want to. Um, bringing cleaner sources of energy and it's essential to de develop our gas resources if we actually want more renewable energy in our energy mix. Finally, last month your share price jumped over 50%. You obviously sent a please explain from the stock exchange and one of the things you said in response was that McGasco is evaluating opportunities to monetize its gas at assets. Where are you going with that? Yes, we we're very busy talking to gas customers, um, both in domestic markets and international markets at the moment. Um, there's certainly an increased demand for gas with the carbon tax now passed through, so uh, increased demand for gas-fired power generation both in New South Wales and in Queensland. At the same time, um, a number of the LNG projects up in Queensland are seeking additional gas as well. So, so it's a very... Um, very exciting and buoyant market for gas right now and uh, we feel that we're very well positioned because we have large un uncontracted gas resources that we'd certainly like to monetise and, uh, and create value for our shareholders. So we're busy working on that. Glenda McLaughlin, thank you very much for coming in, particularly on a day which is such a fiery one for the gas industry. Thank you. Thanks so much, Tiki.